So in terms of setting the scene, uh, first thing I should cover really is the bid switch is a, is a neutral layer that sits in the ecosystem to distribute bid requests in open RTB transactions between SSPs and DSPs. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> So as I said, this is the agenda. We are doing the introduction to the research, uh, exchange-wise executive overview, panel session, uh, and the most important part of the day, obviously, is some drinks and networking. So let's start with what is a deal ID? I know it sounds very basic, and I know a lot of people here in the room are specialists and should know this, and definitely do know this in almost every case, but let's just take things back a step and understand what is a deal ID. So a deal ID is a deal identifier. It's uh, also known as a deal token, and it is a unique number <coughs> for an automated buy to be able to see it and act upon it. So it's, uh, it's emerged over the last two years particularly, we have seen, as a really important part of the ecosystem. Uh, matching buyers and sellers, and it's usually negotiated beforehand based upon a set of criteria. So these criteria could include all sorts of things. In here we put the, it's the bid, it's the type of ad units, it's the section on the side. You could pretty much tie it to everything, is our point. So let's take a step back before deal ID. So not too long ago, maybe six years ago, if you worked in the ad network space, you will recall that the parameters you could target something by was pretty simple on an ad tag that got trafficked in a system, whether it be an ad network system or a publisher's system or an advertiser's system. Very simple. It was the size of the ad. It was the geography, the IP of the user. And it was the placement. Is it going on a specific site? Is it going on a channel? Is it run a network? That was it. Seems quite archaic, right, when you think about it? We moved to a bid request. And in these bid requests, you have all sorts of information. User geo, device ID whether or not it's on an app, whether it's on a uh, domain, uh, whether it's got a lat long. There's 60 pieces of information approximately that are in the OpenRTB bid spec that we use. However, a deal ID is a flag for saying that something in those 60 or a combination of and or rules from the 60 do not exist. So we need to basically add something into this process to say, you know what? I had three pieces of information five or six years ago. Now I've got 60. I still don't get what I need. So give me something extra. Give me a flag. Give me a reason. And we think at BidSwitch that this is still very much misunderstood, even amongst specialists, that we've gone from this very straightforward, linear lack of control to a huge amount of control, and yet still we need to use the deal ID to find even more control. So there's some reasons why deals might be set up. I'm very much hoping people on the panel are gonna find additional reasons or even talk in more depth about specific reasons. But just for a quick brainstorm, I managed to come up with these, which are that a seller wants to offer first party data that's not available in the bid stream. That seems logical. There's a preferred price point that's often against the volume guarantee in terms of the agreement between buyer and seller. The buyer or seller cannot see each other uh, in the reporting platforms they use, so there's a technological problem of the intermediaries, whether it be SSP, DSP, or bid switch itself. Uh, a buyer or seller is using deals as a strategy to get closer to certain organizations. That makes sense. Sometimes people want to be able to transact with somebody and they want something to tie it to, to be able to work out what's going on and they just want to have a conversation and a deal ID can help. A priority of access or spend can be set in terms of the arrangement. An offer, such as a special ad size or a rich media format, can be made available exclusively. That's another logical reason for deal ID, as, as I recall at least. And then incentives, like whether it's a goal or a reward, might be set against the number of deals set up or about how much money is spent through these deals. And the other reason is fairly logical, which is you're moving an I.O. from a non-programmatic environment into programmatic trading. These are all reasons, and I'm sure there's <coughs> others, there's a non-exhaustive list that I managed to put together thinking about it for a moment. So let's take a step back what's happened in the last few years. Um, I go back here to 
start of open RTB 2.0 seems like a logical place because at that time in Jan 2012, which as you'll recall was nearly six years ago, um, SSPs had their own protocols and that was the first time when it kind of came together. So Ru Rubicon had its own spec, Pubmatic had its own spec, OpenX, its own spec, AdMeld came AdX, its own spec. So DLIDs were living at that time in a very nascent form in some of those specs. And then OpenRTB 2.1, uh, later in 2012, video came into the, into the transactional format and the standardization was growing and increasing and now deals are coming available from video SSPs like LiveRail and SpotX. And the standardized deal ID then got put together within the working committee that got launched by April 2014 in OpenRTB 2.2. And this is, you know, one of the catalyst moments that starts to see the, the, the growth really increase. At Nexus, we're very anti deal ID initially. There's some blog posts you can still find online if you want to look that up. Uh, and they went and said they're going to embrace the deal ID and put that live shortly after the IAB announcement a month later. OpenRTB 2.3 brings native into the game. Now you're getting deals from suppliers like Triple Lift. And uh, as recently as last year, digital out of home and audio got added 2.4. So now you've got deals from Spotify, audio vendors, uh, through multiple SSPs, and Broadsign as a digital out of home SSP. And where we are now, uh, open 2.5 this year, Bitswitch welcomed the hundredth SSP using DLID capabilities. So let's talk about deals on Bitswitch for a moment, because I'm sure that's probably one of the interesting things that I can tell you that many of you in the room won't know about. So there's 150 SSPs using BidSwitch at the moment. 118 are deal, deal ID enabled. So we've done the integration with them for, the, for them to be able to transact deals. In October, we saw 101 of them sending out deal IDs into the ecosystem for somebody to buy. Now, I did some analysis into uh, the groupings of those who were using deal IDs and how many we saw. And you'll see in this, uh, in this on your right-hand side that... We recognise there were 19,109 deals that were being sent out from these 101 SSPs. 14,620 result in a bid, just any kind of bid, right, for that specific, with a deal ID coming back for that actual deal. Now, only 30% of those result in impressions. That's 4,368. So there is a, there's a drop-off there between bids that are being placed and things that are being won because of the rules in the auction and what type of deal this is, whether it's uh, preferred or whether it's a uh, priority or whether it's uh, an open of one-to-one -one or one-to-many. There's all sorts of different types of deal ID, obviously. So in these different types, sometimes they just don't win auctions because quite simply something else is won in terms of priority or maybe something, if it's an open request as well, maybe just won on price. The interesting thing that I found in this very kind of growing ecosystem is there was actually 23% of the total, or 4,489 deals, that were just dormant. So maybe somebody set them up a year ago, doesn't use them anymore, maybe they're always on and nobody wants to activate them right now. But for a whole month, 23% of the total just never even got a bid in return. So let's look at how this is scaling over the past year, August to August. You'll see that the, the total number... Whilst it grows, we do a split out of what we define as open or one to open or one to one. So open would be an SSP or a publisher setting up for anybody who has that deal ID to buy. One to open uh, is fairly self-explanatory. And one to one, again, fairly self-explanatory. It means that the advertiser or agency has specifically set it up with that one buyer, whether it be the buyer themselves or the SSP were acting on their behalf. And you'll see the growth comes from all of these different types of deals. So clearly those logical use cases must be, must be being used to their absolute maximum, we would, we would hope. It's really confusing about all these different types. So for a little while now, we've been putting together a playbook with the help of our SSP partners. And we don't look to tell everybody who reads this playbook about what deals are available or what inventory is available. It's not a sales document. It's more of a document that explains transactionally what's available. Does, does a seller offer one-to-one -one deals? Do they offer one-to-many? How do they offer it? How can, you, how can you find out what's available? This document we publish is available on our website, downloadable 
from the, the uh, domain on the screen uh, is available for all of you to look at and to see um, who's offering what and how to get hold of it. So I'm really pleased that I've managed to uh, get some support from some of, our, some of our partners and friends in the industry to join us to talk about DLID today after this research. Um, all of these people have had multiple jobs in the period of time that DLID has been live. And whilst doing that, they picked up various experiences. So Barbara will be representing publishers. Her role currently today uh, is at Time Inc. Uh, representing supply-side platforms is Mark Giblin from Unruly. Dan Larden will be representing demand-side platforms from Infectious Media. And Simon Harris from Dentu Aegis will be speaking about the agency perspective. Thank you very much for coming. And over to, uh, to our exchange with our friends with their research.